Now we move on to issue four. Foresight is 2020. This president is, um, he talks about cognitive capability. He doesn't seem to be cognitively aware of what's going on. Former Vice President Joe Biden delivered his first press conference in months, hitting back at President Trump over attacks on his mental fitness. And while Trump is lagging in national and battleground polls, there's one area where Trump is beating Biden, the enthusiasm gap. Question to you, Matt. Whose position would you rather be in right now, Trump or Biden? Yeah, you'd rather be Biden right now. Uh, there's no question. He has a lead. Uh, there's no no question about that. The size of the lead, I think, is 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 worthy of questioning. I just wrote an opinion piece for Al Jazeera English about why I think Trump's comeback uh, is inevitable. Uh, right now, I wouldn't trust polling. They're polling registered adults. In some cases, they're polling all adults. Uh, they're not polling likely voters. And now that's not uh, you know that's not a, a hoax. It's because you don't do that generally until after Labor Day. Uh, so after Labor Day, this this race is going to tighten. Uh, it's going to tighten because they're going to move to likely voters, which will capture the enthusiasm gap that Trump has among his supporters compared to Biden's. Uh, that doesn't mean that Trump's going to win. If he's at the high 30s where he is right now and Gallup's job, job approval numbers, uh, he's not going to win. He needs to be in the mid 40s uh, to get to 46, 47 percent nationally to have a chance uh, to get reelected. But look, Biden has a battleground state advantage right now. Uh, and but, but I would say that Trump's gone through a really tough two months uh, period politically with coronavirus, with the economic collapse, and with the racial protests. I just think by September, we're likely to see things a little differently. The economy will likely be bouncing back strongly. Presumably, we'll have a handle on coronavirus by then. And I think a lot of the racial protests will be winding down or, or have been in the, in the rearview mirror. And then when the polls start to show this as a, as a you know, mid-single-digit race, that's going to give Trump a chance to win re-election at the debates. Pat? Uh, I agree pretty much with Matt. Let me say that Trump this this last week really took a beat on beating on two things. One, the coronavirus coming back. We've already talked about that. Secondly, you got the economic problem that'll be attendant to that. But third is, I think the third, those two issues are going to be crucial. But what is also going to be crucial is Joe Biden and this idea that Joe Biden really is is mentally losing it. Now that's going to be tested in the three debates. I think they're going to be crucial. If Biden performs as well in the three debates as he performed as well against Paul Ryan, I think he's in really good shape. So I think those are the fundamental issues. I do believe this, by the end of the summer, I would agree with Matt, this tearing down of statues across the board, this marching, this confronting people, the shootings, that little, I mean, uh, uh, Clarence's little commune out there in Seattle has been closed down. All of these issues. All of these issues, I think, are going to turn against the Democrats. Eleanor? Uh, I think June uh, has been Trump's crucible. Uh, he's failed the test on the coronavirus. I don't see how he comes back from that. The, the numbers are going to get worse. Secondly, he's completely misread the whole protest movement. He's acting like it's 1968. It's 2020. Uh, white people uh, now are in, in, in favor of the reforms that uh, Black Lives Matter is calling for. Uh, and the, he's tried out all these messages on Biden and uh, going after Biden's cognitive powers. If you wanna turn the tables on, on Trump, just watch him going down the ramp, watch him you know, holding a glass with two hands, look at his word salad, play the part when he's asked what's his second term at, uh, uh, agenda. And he says, well, experience, experience is a word, but, uh, he, he believes more in talent. This was a softball from Sean Hannity. There was no, no message about a second term. So he's got a lot to get together. And I don't see the economy roaring back in seven or eight weeks time. Uh, we are in uh, the midst of a terrible uh, pandemic and that is gonna, that rises to the top. It has affected every single person in this country. And the president wants, wants us to believe that it's going away. It's a, a disconnect that I, it, I, don't, I don't see how he, how he overcomes. Clarence? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. You know, the, um, uh, that Sean Hannity question was not only uh, stunning, but it was revealing, I think. Uh, you know, the, the question is simply, uh, what are your, uh, what's your, uh, your, your biggest goal for the, the second four years? It reminded me of when Teddy Kennedy, back in, in 1980, was asked about uh, uh, why do you want to be president? 
and he really didn't, he was stuck for an answer. And that, many say, is where his campaign died. And I, I, I had the same feeling about Trump. Why doesn't he have an answer for that right away? It was like he uh, talked about, I mean, he, he could always go back to his old agenda, you know, uh, uh, build a border wall, and that hasn't been built yet, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I wonder, has he really thought about this at all? And, uh, and uh, is he really engaged with his own reelection? That, that's uh, something that, uh, at, at this point, very surprising. Uh, and he, he's so far back uh, that uh, it's going to be tough for him to make up that lost ground after Labor Day, uh, unless it's some unforeseen event, which always happens. But uh, nevertheless, I uh, uh, have a hard time believing that uh, just making the cognitive uh, attack at Biden is going to do it for Trump. Matt, piggybacking off of what uh, Eleanor and Clarence were saying about that Sean Hannity town hall with President Trump, it almost sounded like President Trump struck a different tone, one in which he was sort of resigned to the fact that Joe Biden will beat him in November. I mean, is that, is that a point of concern for a lot of Trump supporters and Republicans who may not be entirely supportive of President Trump, but certainly don't want to see Joe Biden in office? Yeah, I don't know if he's resigned to it. I mean, he's still, you know, working hard, you know, he's willing to travel up early, up late, I'm on the phone working it, you know, so I, I, I don't I don't see him throwing in the towel by any means. Fundraising still high. Grassroots enthusiasm is still high. Look, I think it's entirely appropriate to question why he has not laid out a second term agenda yet. Right. We're four months from the election. Uh, maybe he wants to wait till September when people are paying more attention. Um, but I, and I think he can make the argument he wants to continue making progress on the things he started uh, in the first term, whether it be confirming conservative judges, rebuilding the military, uh, you know, non-interventionism, trying to get us out of these foreign wars, whether it be completing the border wall, at least in the urban areas, all of those things. But he needs to have more than that. And he needs to be able to, to communicate that. That Look, if this is a referendum on Trump, uh, Trump is going to be in a bad position. If it ends up being a contrast between the division uh, that, that Trump has for the next four years and, and who can rebuild the economy, that's where Trump can win with 46, 47 percent. But again, he's got to get his job approval up. If you look at the polling, his job approval and his reelect have been within two points for the last year, right? If his job approval is at high 30s, low 40s, he is not going to get reelected. He's got to get it up to 45, 46%. I do think by September, the economy will be in better shape. We may have 20% economic growth, uh, GDP growth in the second, in the third quarter of the year, which would be an all-time record. Retail sales are up, private sector hiring was up. We, have, we, saw, we just saw a revision from the May numbers. The June numbers were strong in ADP. So he needs to get through this tough period but he's also got to get his campaign on track. He's got to get his message back and he's got to get his job approval numbers up. Pat, just as a follow-up to that, because you've worked in the White House, you've worked on campaigns, you know how strategy and messaging work. I, I think, in my opinion, that President Trump energizes his base a lot more when it comes to the culture war. You've mentioned things like tearing down statues. How much do you think he's going to hone in on the culture war uh, to try to win a second term? Um, I think... To me, it is one of the issues where he has got tremendous support among grassroots folks. Take what the Democratic National Committee did this week, some character, said uh, that Trump's gone out to visit to the, the national image of white supremacy at Mount Rushmore. I mean, that is idiocy. At least it used to be idiocy in American politics. And I think that Trump is, could use these, take a strong position you know, defending the, the statues and defending the idea that they shouldn't be taken down, that they're part of American history, standing up for the police, frankly, criticizing the excesses. These positions are traditionally good positions. And frankly, there's nowhere else for, for Trump to go on these positions, on these issues. I will remind you of one thing. In October 1st of 1968, Richard Nixon was leading by 15 points 43 to 28 over Humphrey. We ended the race 43 all. Humphrey gained 15 points in October. And Eleanor, that's what Trump's going to do this October. Uh, the, culture, <laughs> the, cul the cultural issues, as you define them, protecting uh, Confederate statues, do not speak to 21st century problems. Uh, they don't speak to the uh, vast inequalities in our healthcare system. We have a president who is working to uh, do away with Obamacare in the middle of a pandemic. 
which would affect some 20 million people. It doesn't affect climate change, which is becoming more and more of an imminent uh, issue. Uh, so I, I, I just don't see him getting away with running this uh, TV kind of campaign with uh, flashy cultural issues when people are out there every day worried about their health, worried about their jobs, worried about this planet, and especially young people whose lives have been really interrupted. I, he, he, he doesn't speak to them at all. Okay. Well, final word to Clarence. Matt, Matt. Yeah, yeah, I just was very uh, rather amused to hear uh, Pat compare uh, Hubert Humphrey, who pushed for health care uh, throughout his career, uh, compare him to uh, Donald Trump, who's still working to undo Obamacare, and Republicans haven't come, come together around an alternative. I issues like that, I think, are what's going to make the difference after Labor Day, especially for those swing voters looking at who's offering what uh, at, at a time when uh, after a pandemic when health care is a very important issue with folks, I think uh, uh, that uh, uh, Biden's going to be much better positioned. Well, as we know, we still haven't seen Biden choose a running mate uh, for obviously the, the ticket. And you that's going to tell probably, you, that's going to that's going to factor pretty big into the calculus of where some of these uh, voters on the fence are going to be. And I, I probably would uh, agree with Matt that it will tighten come September. And by that time, obviously, we'll know who Biden's running mate will be, given the fact that a lot of people are questioning his mental fitness and health. 